Hello everyone, I'm Alan, also known as McLaren2009, and today I'm back playing Derail Valley. Now the problem that I'm going to have is what I need to do today. I need to disconnect these intermodal cars from the tractors. connect these intermodal cars to those intermodal cars, then connect them back to the tractors, but I need to put my caboose behind my locomotives. You know what, actually it would probably be easier if I just put my caboose behind the locomotives, hook up to these, and then put them on the front of those. Yeah, that that's, that's going to be the move. All right, so basically what I'm doing is I'm currently at the machine factory in town, but there's not a whole lot up here for me to do. So... I'm going to take basically the only things I've got available. I'm going to take these tractors to the farm, and then both these sets of intermodal containers, they are going to the goods factory. And that that's just pretty much what I've got going on. Now, the thing is, the empty containers, the tractors, or the empty containers and the tractors all weigh exactly the same thing. It's an 11,000 kilogram flat car and a 6,000 kilogram empty shipping container. And you look over here, our caboose is 22,000 kilograms, and these in total are 17,000 kilograms. So they are just marginally lighter than the caboose. So if I want to have it organized by weight, the caboose will actually end up being in front of all of my cars. And that'll make it a little bit easier to deal with when I get to the final destination. But... It's not exactly the right place to put the caboose. The caboose should probably go at the back, but the caboose is kind of heavy, apparently. So, so we don't cause a string line derailment. We're putting it at the front. It's going to look completely ridiculous, but at least we're bringing it along. All right. I need to make sure this switch is aligned to go into the B track. All right, good there. That's going right. That's going right. And we need the caboose. So right, right. All right, good. Everything is great. All right, we need remote. Turn this on, hop up here. Surprisingly, the independent brake is set and not the train brake. So it's kind of like, whatever. All right, so let's get this fired up. And this is going to be our trailing locomotive. This is 60 or 77. There's a 76. All right, now we go over here. And... Somehow, this one is also set up. And I guess I wasn't really on either of them, so I guess in the grand scheme of things, it all works out. All 
All right, 69 and 49, those are the uh, intermodal containers, and 14 is the tractors. I don't know why I remember that, but the bottom line is I do remember it. Did I? I didn't flip. I didn't turn on the breakers. Well, that's embarrassing. Oh, well. It'll be kind of cool if you actually have to prime the engine. Get our locomotives recoupled, and all will be right in the world. Then we can start getting hooked up to everything else. Where? What? What is going on? Why am I moving when I don't want to move? No, no, not important. All right. All right. We need to go over here. would not be fun. to go. Now we go over here. Alright, now we are coupling 77 to 76. So, back to front. It probably won't even last until, uh, we get out of here before it'll get switched. All right. Now we gotta wait until we get past this switch so that it can be realigned back to the roundhouse. Reason being, next time I come here, I want to be able to just go in and refuel my locomotives. Assuming the track doesn't do some weird stuff. Alright, and we're moving. 
And I'll need to flip this switch to be aligned to go that way again. Because that'll be the next way that I come from. <clears throat> so we gotta get over here by this switch. And it's a little ways past it, but it's whatever. All right, now we need this switch right here. I'm curious if they'll uh, put the uh, bell on the remote. Maybe, maybe not. But the thing that I'm really interested in is I would like to see how we have like these little tool belt nodes in VR. It would be kind of cool if we had something comparable with the uh, flat version. Because part of the reason that I do this in VR is because it's just uh, kind of like easier to play. Like it's easier to interact with the controls. You can actually have these things out. And you just have like more options. But when the simulator update comes out, it's going to change a little bit because the uh, flat version is going to get significantly easier, especially if you use like the third person camera, the driving UI, all of that stuff. And those are all great, but if I wanted to play it that way, I would just go play Train Sim World. This will pretty much always be a VR game for me. But supposedly they kind of hinted at they're going to do like uh, something with a third person view for VR that's not gonna make you violently throw up. It kinda sounds like it might be comparable to the game Rolling Line. I finally remember what that game's called. Where you're kind of like a giant looking at a toy train set. Because just doing, like, a third-person, over-the-shoulder camera in VR will get extremely nauseating quickly. Basically, the camera is going to move a lot more than you want it to. Alright, still working. Okay, so. No, I'm going crazy. All right, so coming up on the most useless grade crossing ever. Actually, no, this is not the most useless one. That one is. This one actually serves a purpose. The one that's over there is completely worthless 
because there are pretty much always cars blocking it. It's like there are pretty much always cars blocking this one over here. So there's pretty much no reason to ever try driving down that road. I mean, look. There are cars right here. There's almost no point at all to hit the horn because you can't go this way if you wanted to. Yeah, it's like you couldn't drive this way if you tried. Now, I am partially responsible for those cars being right there. But... Uh, no, pretty much the only option would have been to make it worse. Yeah, because there's the sign marking the track and the tractors that were assigned to go on that track just pushed these far enough that they were going to hit that anyway. So basically this crossing is in a terrible place. Let's see. Alright, that's still the way that we left it. It won't be there for long, but at least for now, we have something. All right, so hook up that, grab this, grab this. All right. So our next order of business is not this first switch, but the next switch. Oh, actually, it's this switch. Okay. So, go forward. The simulator update is going to change, like, everything, because, uh... We'll have to start checking handbrakes. Not just on the cars, but I would imagine the locomotives, too. Like, we know where the handbrake is on the DE2, but we haven't seen where it is on the DE6 yet. And then we're very limited on what we've seen of the uh, DH4, and we know even less about the uh, DM3. And then we have a good idea of where they're going to be on, like, the flat cars, the box cars, gondolas, all that fun stuff. But it'll be interesting because we have to double check handbrakes now. Like, in theory, I could check this right here. It does something. It actually works. But it's kind of one of those things that I think it's position resets when you hop off of 
when you hop off the caboose. actually kind of curious. I was just watching a video yesterday on the caboose. <coughs> Alright, it does not appear we have a brake valve. But we also don't have a conductor, so what difference does it make? <coughs> All right, now we go back here, double check the air, make sure everything's tied in like it's supposed to. It is. Pop it into forward. And let's roll out of here. And it's specifically these, it's not these. Because this is 69 and we're about to go hook up to 49. See, this is already switched. I coupled that to that. It's whatever. I've just made peace with the fact that it's just gonna happen. No matter how much you fight it, how much you kick and scream, it's just going to happen. You just embrace it. All right. Now let me get a crank real quick. All right. <clears throat> it's acting up again. This is just another one of those things that you just kind of have to accept. Actually, I might need to double check my caboose. I may have messed up the brakes. Did you hear that screeching? It's like the brakes are being applied. Okay. I guess they don't reset. Good to know. Brake. It's already in reverse. Throttle up, kick off the brake. It's worth noting that as of this exact moment, the caboose is the only thing with a functioning handbrake. So keep it around there. All right, we go back over here. Yeah, here, no more screeching. Brakes not applied anymore. All right, as long as we keep it around five kilometers an hour, when we make contact with this other cut of cars, all will be right in the world. And this right here should be 49, just like I said. Because the uh, reefer containers over here 
these are going to the uh, food factory. And I am not going to the food factory, so th these are just going to sit here. Normally, I would be trying to go back to the harbor, but that's just not happening right now. No, where am I going? The... I don't know if I'm big enough to actually use that. Alright, let's run to the back, make sure we've got our air tied in. No. If my controls will stop acting up and being weird. Alright, put it into forward. Kick off the independent. And we're moving. And it's already switched. It didn't even make it five minutes. While we're on the subject. Alright, that's still back to front. And this is still back to front. Okay, so it's kind of like random. And it makes even less sense. But I need to be over here because I need to get past this, this switch. And the cool thing about using uh, Streamlabs, I have a chat. Actually, I technically have three, but only two of them are active. The Streamlabs Cloud Bot and the uh, Night Bot. I also have Stream Elements, but that one's muted because it has a lot of the same functions as the Cloud Bot for Streamlabs. And then the night bot is kind of like its own thing, so I just leave that one. All right, next up is this switch. Flip this switch so that it's aligned back with the C track. Because that's generally where the inbound yard is. And we go up here and hop on our train before it runs away. And still golden. Hello. Or I can just get run over. That's always fun. Alright. Now, the thing that's going to happen is we're going to go down the rails here. 
And then it's going to get a little bit weird when we get over here to the steel mill, because currently the track is aligned to go back to the harbor, but we're not going back to the harbor. We're going to the goods factory. Although we don't have to worry about that yet, because the first thing we got to do is dump off these tractors at the farm. So when my controller stops freaking out and making me move when I don't want to. All right. So we're going downhill and we can go a hundred, but we're not going to go. get on my rift of all things. get a little bit interesting when we get around to city southwest and the reason for that is this first corner is just 30 kilometer it's just a 30 kilometer zone so we gotta slow down a lot and since we're going downhill it's gonna make it interesting to say the least no stop it Controllers being weird today. City Southwest. All right. Why do I not have my uh... It's not the end of the world. So, coming up on the uh, city, so we want to be going slow, but we're not there yet, so we can speed up a little bit. Alright, 
It's only 30. I mean, clearly we can go 80 right here, but we're not going to go 80. But you get the idea. And this is going to be the most unusual train just because I have the caboose up here by the locomotives. But since the caboose is so heavy, it's actually heavier than any of the uh, cars behind it. So the heavier thing goes forward. Being the heavier thing, the heavy thing goes forward, lighter things go backwards. I'm kind of curious how that works when you have uh, locomotives at both ends. Maybe it would still be set up so that it's closest to the uh, leading locomotives. Because the ones at the back are kind of there to help. Or at least that's how I think it works. Could be wrong about that, though. I'm trying to work with the railroad, but I'm not there yet. Hopefully just a little while longer. Then I can get started. Alright, we need to get... Where's 14? Alright, it's going to B2I. Alright, let's just throw that on the ground. And we'll grab this. D5. D5. Alright, so basically when we get to the uh, goods factory, we don't have to worry about them going on to different cracks. We just have to split them in half at the two different orders and then dump them on the inbound track. Easy day. to be careful in this area specifically because for whatever reason this part of the track does not like multiple locomotives not at all has a real bad habit of breaking apart locomotives and the caboose sometimes that one's really weird when it does that but as long as you're going around about 20 kilometers an hour, you're generally fine. You're not immune to it happening, but it happens less if you're going slow. But as I'm starting to figure out, it doesn't, like, universally affect the entire train. It only does, like, part of it. It, like, selectively 
kicks like a locomotive or a specific car and it just breaks that thing. It doesn't like affect everything across the board, so it's really weird and hard to predict. And it's also annoying to fix because when it happens, it kind of creates like this uh, effect where the two locomotives have like the, uh, they kind of behave like magnets with the uh, same polarity and you try to throttle up to push them back together using the and then it just doesn't work. It wants to like repel it. Or they want to repel each other away. And it's like the weirdest thing. Alright, it's this area specifically. If you come in here too fast, like around about 30 or higher, that's pretty much when it's almost guaranteed to happen. And it's like the most annoying thing. But if you're around about 20, generally you're safe-ish, if that makes sense. All right, so... All right, we've got the locomotives and the caboose through the switch. So maybe we're safe? speed up now. No. It's being weird. Alright, so you go over here, fly through the oil well central pretty quick, and then we'll go hit up the farm. <clears throat> and it's anyone's guess if the uh, inbound track will be empty or not. If it's empty, we're well, great. All we gotta do is just pull through. If it's not empty, what we gotta do is pull all the way through and back up into it. Because our tractors are the very last thing on this train. If I remember correctly, 2i at the farm should be on the right hand side. Not the closest to the office, but the next one over. Maybe. What 
I'm gonna do is grab this, grab this, maybe, turn this on, and let's go out front. Could have just walked through the wall, but Instead, I'm going to try walking through the door. Still didn't use the door, but... Oh, well. Might as well enjoy it while we can. Alright, let's go up here. Alright. This way... Perfect. I'm thinking that's the way to the A track. Actually, that's the loading track. Even better. Now, I have a train around here somewhere. There it is. I knew it would show up eventually. As many times as I've done this, I still don't remember where the office is. Is that it over there? Oh, okay, so it's clear on the other side. Alright, whatever. Alright, got the train going directly into the inbound track. So I need to be over here. Basically what we're going to do is I'm going to flip this switch so that it's back aligned with the main track so I can just drive through here the next time that I come here. So after the last uh, car after the last flat car with tractors on it passes this point I'm gonna flip this switch and there's only like five of them so yeah five all right so let's apply some train brake just sort of Now, this is the inbound track, so we flip this, or we bring them to a stop right past this. This is another thing that kind of says, like, the grade crossings are pointless. Because the uh, signs that are marking the tracks are blocking the lane that you would drive through. But, because we're sort of worried about these things, our crane is not going to block the uh, road. Theirs can, but ours will not. completely backwards about where the uh, office is. Alright. Only supposed to take 18 minutes, it took 53. 
Well, what can you do? Anything going to the goods factory? Machine factory. Food factory. City Southwest. City Southwest. Yeah, nothing going my way. All right. So, go back over here where our nice little uh, black cloud is. And we need to flip this switch. Now, when the last intermodal car crosses this point, we flip this back to the main. And the steel mill's right there, so we don't even have to go far. Actually, with that in mind, should probably flip this switch. No, this thing. Did I get the money? Eh, I kind of don't think that I did. Alright, let's go see if I did, because I feel like I didn't. I can double check in here. All right, I think I got it. Yeah, it's like the most bizarre thing. Like, how do you forget to get paid? But when it's such a laughable amount, like that was, it's not really worth remembering. <laughs> Is all three of these jobs combined are not enough to refuel these locomotives. way, but we need to hop off because I need to realign this switch to go that way. Because this isn't exactly a normal route for me. And it's only been an hour. Up a 
At least it's not nearly as steep going left as it is going right. Alright, there's three, four, five, and six. Alright, now we gotta be up here. And I think I need to be on top of this box. away. And we're golden. So we just go through the steel mill, get up here to the goods factory. I'm gonna have to throw the switch to go into the goods factory because the uh, last time I went this way I was coming down from the military base. Actually, I was coming down from the coal mine. But either way, the bottom line is I was going that way. So when we get around here, we're going to have to flip this switch to go into there. And then everything should be aligned to go towards the uh, loop. And then we uh, back into the inbound track. And everything's right in the way. I think it's partially uphill. So we need to speed up, but not too much. progress. Let's kill the throttle. This area is pretty high speed, so it's not too big of a deal. But I generally want to keep it around like 60. That's probably just me being overly cautious. Like, it goes down to 70 right there. Which is kind of weird, because it's like... Well, it's straight until we get here. Then it tightens up a little bit. But then past that curve, it should speed up again, because this is like almost a... It's not exactly straight, but it's pretty straight. 
So in theory, once you get all of your train around that turn, it's a relatively straight shot. See, it goes from 70 to 100. And our train is pretty short. Like, it's not worth using two locomotives. Like, this was extremely light. All three loads were, like, nothing. But the advantage of using two locomotives is that I have a lot of pulling power. So you don't have to throttle up too far to make it move. It'll kind of just do its own thing. It's really easy to manage. Goes back down to 70 for the turn. So basically keeping it around 60 is perfectly fine in this area. And then I think I think it goes down to 50 for the turn itself. But I I don't remember exactly. As much as I've played this game, I don't have the entire map memorized. I know, sad. But it is what it is. So we make this turn, and then I need to get out this. It would be really weird if I did this in, like, uh, something that requires, like, uh, precise use of the controllers. So, like, this... Uh, jolting right thing that I'm dealing with would be a big problem in like uh, VTOL VR for example if I was flying the attack helicopter because if the uh, controller's failing on me and it's uh flipping to the right when I don't want it to, that would uh, start messing with the uh, trim in the helicopter. And that would be a bit of a problem. Yep, it's 50. Alright, we gotta slow down a little bit, but we can't slow down too much because pretty much everything up to the goods factory itself is mostly uphill. Now, this load is, like, laughably small. But, we're still going uphill, so we don't want to lose too much speed. Alright. Speed up a little bit. Although the good news is, I might not use too much fuel. So it probably won't be unbearably expensive to, uh, do the uh, servicing from the caboose. Alright. Speed up a little 
bit. It is a really short train. It's seven cars, including the caboose and two locomotives. This could have easily been done with a DE2, but instead I have my uh, sequentially ordered DE6s. But there really just weren't enough things going where I want to go at the machine factory, so I just made do with what I've got. It is what it is. right when we get through this tunnel we'll be at the goods factory so I can take this put it away and grab this okay let's kill the throttle completely and let's get ready to hop off I think that's C. The I think the passenger terminal is C. I know A are, is uh, those two tracks right there. That's B. I want to say that's C. Alright, I need to hop off on this side. Because I gotta get everything past that switch right there. here. And let's apply some more on the train brake. Release that. And this is at least my specific way of doing this. There are probably other ways you can do it, but I prefer to uh, back in everywhere I go. All right, we need to go to 5i. Four, five, all right. Throttle up. Yeah, somebody on uh, Discord was saying there was like uh, apparently a bug that removed all of the DE2s from the map. So I was keeping an eye out for it, <laughs> trying to see if the only thing he was going to spawn was the DE6. But, as you can see, the bug hasn't affected me directly, because there's a DE2 right here. So, for the moment, all is right in the world. Is this the real shop, or is... No, this is the... This is the fake one. The real shop's over by the passenger terminal. Alright, 
This is 69. This is 49. Now, once these get backed in, I'll have to uh, split them up. All I'm going to do is just cut the cars, but... That is, of course, if the crane decides it wants to go into the parking spot. But that's another one of those things that we just have to deal with it until the update comes and some of these weird things get fixed. But it's only six cars. All right, D5I. There's two cars and a caboose. There's the sign. So let's throttle up a little bit. I don't even know if the uh, tracks connect back there. They probably should, but I don't know if they do. All right, so cut this here. All right, and then we go back here, and we cut here. As you can see, those got reversed. So we go over here, and there's the office. Nope. Helps if you don't run into the wall. D5I, D5I. One, two. All right, it's supposed to take 34 minutes, took 76. What a coincidence! We have Locomotive 76 with us. So. Let's go turn off my locomotives real quick. Kill it. Put it into neutral. Kill the breakers. All right, and then let's go up here. Turn that off, turn that off. It's already in neutral, so kill the breakers. Then we'll go back to the caboose, and we'll do our servicing there. Even though we don't need to do it here. Could just walk over to the terminal. Eh, it's going to be expensive. Oh well. I'm not worried about money. Almost up to two million now. All right, so let's turn this off, put that away. It'll be kind of cool when they put a charger for the uh, new flashlight in here. All right, those are connected. Those are connected. And those are connected. Now let's go see what jobs are available. It's looking like intermodal containers probably going to the harbor. Hmm. 
uh, shunting jobs. Apparel. Yeah, and this kind of goes with what I was saying the other day about how clothes is heavier than you would think. Yeah, that's a 31,000 kilogram container. And that's a freight haul. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's probably going to the harbor. And these are chemicals. They're chemicals, but they're not hazmat. All right. And this is a logistics hall, probably going to Oil Well Central, if I had to guess. It's anyone's guess where these are going. And this is probably freight hall. All right, so freight, freight, logistics. Interesting. All right. All right, what do we got? Where are we going? All right, the uh, tooling is going to the food factory. Oh, the logistics hall is going back to the harbor. All right, good to know. Food factory, machine factory. All right. So we don't have a whole lot going for us at the moment. But we can take these. These. And we can fill these. It's not really going to be worth it, though. That's Food Factory. Yeah, it's not going to be worth it regardless. So probably the best bet... This is two pickups loaded with empty intermodal containers. Let me go see if I can find 35, and I know where two is. So let's go find 35 real quick. Might even be these. Nope, that's 31. I don't know. You're up here. All right. Oh. Nope, that's a freight hall. It's got to be a storage track. It's this, isn't it? All right, that's 40. That's not supposed to look like that. That's 38. All right, this is 35. So basically we need to... All right, I know this is 11,000 kilograms. This is 20. And what is the empty tanker weigh? 19. All right. 
Well, that's going to make it interesting. All right. In theory, the way that I can play this, if I back up to these, hook these cars up to this mangled car, pull all of those out, back them up onto this track, drop them, hook up to the tankers, pull them out, hook up to the front of the boxcar, because this is 20,000 kilogram. or Okay, that, that's even better. That's a reefer. 21,000 and 20,000, respectively. And we can put the tankers in front. It's a difference of 2,000 kilograms tops. So it shouldn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things, but it could pose a problem. So hook those up to this, pull these out, drop them on this track, drop this car, pull forward, back up, hook up to these, pull forward, back up, hook to the front of the reefer car up there. And that's just how we're going to pull this out of here. Well, sounds like a plan. But I have a feeling I think I'll just deal with that another day. I'm probably going to call it here for now. And then I'll just... Uh, I'll probably stream something else a little bit later. Haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet, but this seems like as good of a stopping place as any. So in a recap of what I've accomplished today, I built a train of intermodal containers and tractors at the machine factory, brought everything along with the caboose, I dropped off the, uh, it's like dropped off the tractors at the farm, and I got the intermodal containers that are just empty containers, by the way, all dropped off here at the goods factory. And I've got an idea of what I'm going to work on next time. So, as a matter of fact, let's just go get those. Alright, we're doing this one, so that's two. Uh-oh. Gonna have to double-check that. Because three of these are going to Oil Well North. So we gotta make sure we have two and 35. No, no, no. Becoming one with the uh, job machine. Okay. We need to verify this. No, no, no. Stop this. Okay. This is 40. And this is 959. Oh, no. I gotta move these too. Well, 
All right, so we got to amend the plan a little bit. <laughs> we have to hook these to this, pull that forward and get it detached from this because it's not supposed to look like that. Then we got to get these three cars out of here. It's like we got to get these out of here. And only then can we get to these cars. Uh, okay, there's plenty of room on this track. So we can just shove this back as close to the sign as we can get it. Oh, they are connected over here. So we just back those up close to the sign. And we're just going to have to do some creative switching. It's going to make it interesting. And we're going to upset our imaginary yard workers. And yard master, for that matter. All right. So that's what I'm going to have to do next time. Hook this to that, hook that to that. Pull all four of these out, drop them on this track. And then I can pull out the tankers that I want to pull out. And we can go from there. Basically, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take time. And... That's just what I'm going to have to deal with next time I stream Derail Valley. So, this is as good of a place to stop as any. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice day.